this is module two of creating graph subscriptions using a low code approach. The link to module one will be included in the description below. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of how to process the notification after we manage to successfully create the subscription in module one. So if you haven't watched module one, please go back and watch it now and come back to this video after. So let's get right to it. Okay guys, in module one we covered how to process the validation token and in module two we're going to discuss how to process the change notification so when graph sends a logic app a change notification it'll send a request body as a JSON collection graph will continue to retry for up to four hours and if it does not receive a 200 status code within that period it will disregard the change notification so let's take a look at what the change notification uh, request looks like. So as you can see here, uh, this is the JSON structure that will be sent across the wire. And when you receive the change notification, this ID right here will essentially be a pointer uh, to the object in terms of a notification. So in our case, it will be a message. So we can use that ID to look up things like the message body, and certain properties of that message. So let me go ahead and navigate over to uh, Power Automate Flow and I am going to open one of the flows that I've created that has logic in place for the notification. And first I'm, I'm, I want to just kind of point out a few things from Module 1. As you can see here this looks almost identical to Module 1. There's one exception. So if we open the switch statement we will see that we now have an additional uh, case statement here. And this case statement is parsing the content type and looking for a value of application slash JSON semicolon char set equal UTF-8. And this in fact is what will be sent to us and we need to acknowledge back uh, per the specification with a 202. There's no need for a header, no need for a body. Once we do this, um, Graph uh, assumes that we have the notification and we're taking action on the notification if need be, and it's completed its job. So at this point, what we would do is we would implement our business logic. So what I want to do is I first need to set up a subscription uh, for this webhook. So I'll snatch the URL here, and I will navigate over to our Graph Explorer and I am going to provide the notification URL and I already have my uh, subscription uh, URL uh, statement set up here so I'm going to change this to a post and I'm going to run the query and our subscription is valid as it returned an ID which is a uh, pointer to our subscription so now what we can do is we can navigate back to our flow we can take a look at the run history and we can see that it was processed and if you take a look here um, the validation token was processed and it returned the proper 200 sequence back um, to us and now all we need to do is we simply need to send an email message to this inbox and it will trigger a notification so let me do that uh, I will open Outlook real quick here and I am going to change to the proper account. And I need to find my phone here and approve this. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to generate a new mail. I'm going to send it to myself and I'm going to call this test message. Send. And we'll wait for it to arrive in the inbox. And we can see we got the test message. Now if we navigate back over to our flow, we should have received a notification here. And we can see that we did it, it executed and it failed. So let's take a look at the run history here. And the key here, guys, is to take a look at what failed. And we can see that uh, it did, in fact, receive the notification. But where did it fail? 
So we got the response and we sent the act back. And now our issue is in our business logic. So we can see down here, we have bad inputs, inputs. So this is perfectly fine because in module three, I'm going to provide you uh, with a working sample of business logic. So I'm not going to really go into what I'm doing here. I'll cover that in module three. And uh, what we can see here is that the notification in fact was processed. So what I'll do here, uh, just for sanity's sake, I'll edit this flow and I'll modify this case statement and I'll just simply remove this action and that'll essentially fix this uh, flow here and I'll navigate back over to Outlook and I will send another test message test 2 okay and let's send it We'll wait for the inbox and we'll navigate back over here to our flow. We'll go back, check run history, and we can see in fact that it succeeded. So now when we take a look at this flow, we'll see that the notification branch of the switch statement did in fact respond and acknowledge that it received the notification and we executed some business logic here. So in module three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a shared mailbox uh, as my solution and we're going to uh, process any inbound messages that come into that shared mailbox and we're going to extract the subject body and that is a an example that you may use in a real world scenario so we'll cover that in module 3 so I hope this has been helpful and stay tuned and you'll find links to module 1 and uh, 3 in the bottom of the description there as well as to my github pages sites Thank you for your time.